Welcome to Voices of Experience, the official podcast of the National Speakers Association. I'm your host, technology strategist and futurist, Crystal Washington. As speakers, we have the opportunity to not only communicate a message verbally, but also create genuine interaction and even long-lasting shifts. In today's episode, Create Branded Interactive Tools, we're going to learn how we can create additional streams of income that will also sell our speaking services. Are you ready? Let's go. On this segment of Voices of Experience, we have Stephen Shapiro, CSP, CPAE, here to speak to us about branded interactive tools. Stephen led a 20,000 person innovation practice at Accenture that developed digital performance tools. And he has personally developed personality poker, which has been played by 150,000 people in 35 different countries. Thank you for joining us today, Stephen. Crystal, it's great to be here. Here's my first question for you, because I know that you're a master at this, and I recently had the opportunity to see you talk about kind of the back end of how you develop these tools. But before we even get into that, why should speakers care about adding tangible or even electronic interactive elements that live outside of the virtual meeting platform? Well, I think that the, the, from my experience, most people learn by doing. So when we talk, we create emotional and intellectual uh, experiences for people. But when someone can actually play with a process that's embedded inside of some kind of tool, mm -hmm. they are able to take their understanding to a completely new level. I love that. And, and let's, let me ask you a question just out of purely selfish mode, okay? Does it benefit the speakers any? Because some might be saying, okay, yeah, yeah, I hear you, but I'm, I'm busy with my speaking business. Does it benefit your business any to do this? It definitely benefits the business. I mean, partly, for example, with personality poker, I created that because I wanted to have more fun giving speeches. So I benefit during the speech, but the other benefit is people play personality poker during a speech Mm -hmm. And then they go off and they buy the cards. And so I have a whole business of selling cards and selling systems around personality poker. And people play the online version of personality poker. And we've had tens and tens of thousands of people who've learned about me through word of mouth through that game. That is amazing. So not only have you created an additional stream of income, but on top of that, your tools are actually getting you more business as a speaker. Absolutely. There are many times when somebody will say, hey, we were at an event. Uh, somebody brought in decks of personality poker cards. We were playing it. it. Looks really great. We'd love for you to come in as the creator. We'd love for you to come in and actually do it for us the proper way. So I've done a lot of work based on the back of that. Okay. That's fabulous. Now, you're known for having highly interactive elements during in-person meetings. We've already talked about that. Can you briefly share two of your favorites, maybe go into a little bit more detail about personality poker and then maybe something else that you do? Sure. So personality poker is probably my favorite. It's a, as you would imagine, a deck of cards. It's literally 52 poker cards, words on them in addition to the suits, colors, and numbers. And the words that are on the cards describe behavioral attributes, creative, analytical, empathetic, uh, organized. And we have people trading cards. So I've done this in ballrooms with a thousand people in Las Vegas and people are on their feet, standing up, trading cards. And the goal is to get five cards where the words best describe how you see yourself. We also have a second round of trading where people can gift cards. And what's so awesome is then in a matter of minutes, People have five cards that describe themselves and based on the suits, colors, and numbers, I can tell them anything and everything about themselves. And we do that as a group with a thousand people or a small wow. group. Wow. So this is an interactive element that you can do with a huge group because for many, I would say activities, you're limited by the number of people in a room, but it sounds like this is something that you can pretty open, you can up to open up to a pretty large amount of people. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, logistically, obviously, we're dealing out cards and things of that nature. There's ways that we, as it scales, but pretty much everything I do needs to scale. Most of my interactive experiences can be done with 10,000 people. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. Is there any other type of gamification that you do? Uh, as far as gamification specifically, one of the things that I've developed is called the 30-Day Innovation Challenge. Now, this is, it was specifically designed to be done after an event, but mm -hmm. we also use it during an event. And basically what it is is a competition where people 
uh, who are attending a session for 30 days after that session will get a question sent to them through text or email. And based on the speed and accuracy of their responses, they will get points. And so there's a leaderboard where you get to see how everybody is doing in comparison to everyone else who attended the event. And after 30 days, a winner is declared and a prize is given. Uh, but it's so cool to do this with, let's say it's a day long training class. Mm -hmm. We will have it set up so that at the first break, the first question is sent to everyone so that when they come back from the first break, we've got the leaderboard already up there. We do this at lunch. We do this mm -hmm. the afternoon break. So we've done three questions during a day long session. And now people are so excited that we get 95% of people playing all 30 days uh, once, once they leave the room. That is an amazing follow rate for that. And let me just say, for anyone that's listening right now, I know that Stephen is being so open with the back end of his business and giving us ideas. I don't want to hear about anyone else creating personality spades based on what Stephen has said to us. We're using his ideas as an example, but we also want to craft our own things. So I just have to throw that out there, okay? You're giving us some ideas, but we need to craft our own things based on our own offerings. Now, Stephen, all of these things sound great in the in-person world, right? When it comes to personality poker, you're dealing out cards. But I'm sure you've noticed uh, we're not having as many in-person meetings nowadays. So have you uh, adapted these elements to Zoom world where participants aren't in a room with each other? Yes. Uh, in fact, it's quite a bit of fun. I find, you know, the interesting part is I think the digital world provides a lot of advantages. Uh, so like with personality poker, we do have a video game version of personality poker. It looks like a slot machine in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. So instead of our dealing out five cards to each person in physical world, they go to this website and they play the game and they keep on spinning the cards till they get five cards that they like. And that gives us, uh, you know, their personality. They take a snapshot of their hand, put it in as their virtual zoom background. So now everybody who's on the call gets to see the five cards that they chose, which is an added advantage that you don't get when you're doing it in person. So there's so many different clever ways that we can take the virtual world and I won't say make it better, make it different, but equally as good. You know, that's powerful because when you're talking about putting these, uh, their results as their background, as you said, now they're sharing it with everyone on the call versus just the people around them that can see their cards in their hands. So that absolutely. That's that, the other cool, sorry, what? I was gonna say the other the other cool thing is with Zoom is you can rename yourself. So mm -hmm. you could rename yourself so that I'd be Steven Shapiro Diamonds or you know, whatever. So you can actually change your name so that not only do people see the hand, but you can choose your favorite suit and put it in your name. Ah, so you're even helping them learn to use Zoom better. It's not even just about the game. You're making better participants for all of us. Thank you on behalf of all the speakers, Stephen. We appreciate you. Um, and it sounds like you're having them actually play this during the Zoom. So you're not having them do this before the, the virtual experience starts. This is a part of the presentation itself? We can do it both ways, but my personal philosophy is the more we engage people during live events, mm -hmm. interactive experiences, mm -hmm. the more people will stay participating throughout all of it. And so mm -hmm. I typically like to queue it up, talk about it. Here's what we're going to go do. It literally, the way we've designed it, takes about one minute at most for them to play the game. Okay. Everybody comes back. And now we can do the real-time interpretation of the hands. And I'm drawing on slides and engaging people in the audience. I have people, whether it's polls or people raising their hands. So there's so many different ways that we can get people involved. Uh, but I love the interactivity during the speech rather than having them necessarily do it beforehand. Okay, that's powerful. All right, so let's talk about continued learning. And, and this kind of ties into the whole leaderboard concept you had here. In both in-person and virtual, we know that behavioral shifts don't happen with one interaction. Do you offer attendees anything else post-event? I mean, I know you talked about the leaderboard. And if so, what kind of, uh, what kind of resources and how do they access it afterwards? So I have a book that just came out uh, earlier this year, which is all around solving complex business problems and there are some tools in it. So what I do is for my clients who pay me uh, is I will create a custom password protected web page. It's basically a portal mm -hmm. where I will put on there tools, videos, downloads, templates, PDFs, and a bunch of other materials, uh, recording of the speech that I just gave, maybe the PDF of the slides. And so 
what we'll do is uh, usually during the middle of the speech, sort of the halfway point, I will tell people the website and the password so they can go and download the PDF so that for the second half of my presentation, they're able to play along at home. But then when we're done, they're able to go back and look at the tools. Uh, I just did a, a, an event uh, last week where we did that. And then the following week, they had a second session where everybody now needed to get into breakout groups in Zoom, mm -hmm. use the tools, solve problems. And then after that, every day for five days, they needed to spend 10 minutes a day practicing with it. So we built basically a three week process whereby it started with the speech and then it builds up to application and practice and building habits. Wow. Now that's powerful. You said something that I found interesting. You said when clients pay you. So are, is this just for all of your paid clients or is this an upsell feature? Like for a higher fee, they get access to all these extra goodies. I like to do this for every paid event. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes what I'll do is an extra added bonus uh, is I will also create a custom email address for that event. Mm -hmm. And what I will encourage people to do is to, if they have any questions, to send me an email with their questions. I don't respond to the emails, but what I do is I create a video after two weeks or 30 days where I answer all of the questions and I post that back onto the portal. So mm -hmm. people feel as though they're getting support if they get stuck. And look, as you know, everything is a negotiation, everything is a conversation. But my thought is I want to create at this time more than anything else, I want to create as much value as I possibly can for my clients. And I would rather over give uh, to them because that to me is what we need to do right now. I love it, especially right now. But I think you were already doing this even beforehand. So it sounds like this is just one of your business practices in general. Absolutely. I've, I've been creating these custom portals for about 10, 12 years now. The 30-day uh, innovation challenges have been around for about uh, six, seven years. So my, my, I've always had this philosophy that we need to move away from an event mindset, mm -hmm. which is we walk on the stage and we leave and then it's done, to a process mindset where it could start before we walk on stage, but it should last long after we leave the stage. Okay, let's, let's dive into this process mindset because, Stephen, there are people right now that are listening. They have their own processes and maybe their own activities. They're sold on what you're saying. They want to offer more of these things. Do you mind sharing some of your favorite DIY or professional resources for hiring someone else for giz getting these physical items like cards or virtual offerings like the, the video game you talked about? Sure. Let's, let's talk about the virtual. I mean, the virtual world is, is nice because first of all, you don't have to deal with inventory. You don't have to deal with shipping. And uh, so it, like, especially right now. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways to go. You have the, a lot of my tools have been developed in partnership with people. Mm -hmm. So I have people who believe in me, think that, you know, we're going to do well. And so they would build the tools, host the tools, manage the tools. And then we share the revenues that we get from these tools if they're tools that are for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have some subscription tools that are done that way. Uh, in other cases, you know, there are ways that you can create, like I said, a DIY version of it. We create we created in Trello, which is a project management tool, we created an interactive tool that allows people to look at my lenses in a much more engaging way. So there, you can do so many different things. You can use Google Docs, Google Slides to create an interactive presentation with hyperlinks that will create a high level of value. So it just requires a little bit of creativity, not necessarily a lot of money. I love it. And thank you for giving us both things that we can do ourselves as well as additional items that, you know, we can hire out to someone else. For those that actually need help, are there any online resources you use to find people to fine tune this stuff? So I'll, I'll give an example. I go to Upwork for everything because there's, there's people on there that can do just about anything. Are there any tools that you utilize like that to find experts or do you almost always do partnerships? I these days do more partnerships than I do Upwork. I used to do a lot with Upwork, uh, but now I've just has, I have such a good network of people that do great work and that are interested in expanding their businesses that uh, I've really focused on that side of things. So I hope everyone's catching that one of the takeaways here at this point then is to also make sure that we're networking with people with other skill sets so that as we grow in our expertise and our following, maybe we'll be able to have more partnerships for those that don't already have them so that we can be like Steven when we grow up. Uh, Steven, is there anything else that you think our listeners should hear regarding really upping their game? Because this whole 
whole talk about branded interactive tools, the whole time we spent it together is really about upping our game and adding more value. Is there anything else you think that they should be aware of? Well, I'll just add one last part, which is the added advantage of having interactive tools is that you don't just necessarily need to use them during a speech or sell them, but you can also license them. And so I'm in conversations with a number of different companies right now uh, that either want to license the tools internally for their employees, or in one case, it's actually a software company that wants to take my tools and embed my tools in their software so that they can offer my tools to their clients. So there's just a whole new range of opportunities when you start thinking about it from that perspective. Thank you for tuning in to Voices of Experience, the podcast of the National Speakers Association. Catch us on your favorite podcast app, YouTube, and NSA's social media profiles. If you're a member of NSA, be on the lookout for an email from NSA staff or board member regarding one-on-one Zoom tours of your member benefits. NSA members enjoy deep discounts on a variety of professional products and services. Some of those discounts are greater than the price of NSA membership. Additionally, we have several on-demand resources for getting the business building information you need in the moment. So check your spam, check your filters, be on the lookout for those messages. I'll see you next week.